Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the Soviet Union's forceful recruitment of Nazi scientists after World War II. We already talked about Paperclip and Matchbox, and tonight we are talking about Operation Osa Viking. I'm your host, Casey. I'm Mike. And I'm Jericho Missile Joe. So, Operation Ocean Vikings. <laughs> uh, is that the sequel to Ocean Eleven, or is that the original thing they stole from? Uh... <laughs> it's what they yeah. stole it from. <laughs> Ocean. It, it was. It was originally starring uh, famous Viking George Clooners, um... <laughs> and his and his son Clunesfin. <laughs> Clu- <laughs> Clunesfin. <laughs> Fucking. Yeah. Um, so Operation Hulk. I don't see. I I don't know how you. Oso Viking. However you want to say it. Operation Oso. Viking. Oh, Viacom. Fuck them. <laughs> Oso Viking. Something um, like that. Yeah. So that's a that's an acronym. Or is it an actual word? The Stanford. Well, I think I think that's I think that's how the English. Like that's how it translates to English. Oh, that's how you'd say yeah. it. I don't. Yeah, it's probably some crazy ass Russian word that none of us are going to be able to pronounce. Well, at least not me. I was just asking because I didn't know if that was a Russian word or um, something that I I read said it was an acronym for something, and I was just like. Uh, not the long ass acronym. I didn't know if that was true or not. Yeah, I said it was an acronym of the Soviet Parliament Parliament uh, Paramilitary Organization, later renamed to D O S A A F, which stands for Volunteer Society for Cooperation with the Army, Aviation. And I feel Navy. like I've heard that before, and it's really huh. ringing Metal Gear Solid vibes. And I don't think that, I think that's <laughs> like something else. I, I I think I'm thinking of them. I'm thinking of um, actually, you know what? Now that I said it out loud, it was Metal Gear Rising, and it's um, Raiden looking for the the Russian guy, Dos something. Dosekis. <laughs> he he talks to the one. He is the most interesting. He talks to man. the one um, French. Uh, isn't she French? I don't know, but she was like, "I can show you a better time than that old crusty bear." Or maybe she. God damn, that's a rant. It is raining so fucking hard. So, uh, sorry, I walked past. The, I, I, I walked past the window. It's a surprise. So yeah, everybody knows. I was like, I, uh, my history knowledge is all tied into video games, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, Casey, why don't you go ahead and tell us what Operation? Oh, uh, mm, uh, uh, to to understand Osa Viking. First, we must go back to the beginning. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, <laughs> back to opera- or Operation Paperclip, and then we got to do Matchbox again, and then we got to come right back over here. And then we'll be full circle. Um, no, so there was a Soviet program that the MVD, the Ministry of Internal Affairs, carried out along with army units. At the end of World War II, the Soviet was uh, the Soviet Union had been devastated by our old Nazis, and uh, they lost the Soviets lost twenty seven million people. They had seventeen hundred cities destroyed. Their agriculture was basically at a standstill, and uh, basically they said that the well, yeah, they the, went scorched earth. They were burning it themselves. <laughs> and like, uh, no, that's what happened because <laughs> of all that the Soviets agreed that the Nazis had to pay reparations for the war to them. So in doing that, they, uh, they agreed that it was going to be payable by the, uh, Nazis in the form of their equipment, their goods, and their, uh, basically man labor. Hey, true believers. You remember when we told you back in operation paperclip that it was a race to the, the cold war. <laughs> Whatever. This is the stay tuned part to it. I can't do a Stan Lee voice. <laughs> yeah, back when we did operation paperclip, we, we talked about the, the whole, um, 
that whole uh, ordeal with the. Uh, yeah. I, I can't. Yes, I can't get it. <laughs> with uh, the, the the wars and the countries and, and the, the people, people and, and the, 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 the whole Cold War <laughs> thing, the whole the fucking the race to fucking shit, and then it's just yeah, I I can't talk right now. <laughs> Um, we said we yeah, were gonna bring uh, up this back in Operation cool. Paperclip is what we were talking about. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it was basically a race between everybody to get the best scientists and engineers and fucking minds. Yeah, out of the. I want to know. So I Nazi only know band. about the. I only know about the the paperclip ones. I really want to know what fucking scientists that they got that let them win the space race. Space race. See, that's what I was trying to fucking remember. I was like the fucking the Cold War thing. The fucking I was sitting there stuttering, stuttering over. I was like, God damn it, dude! Not fucking. What is it? Why? What is that? I kept problem? stumbling over shit because I kept wanting to say missile race because I kept the fucking V two the V two fucking shit. Joe, did you see? Did you look up any of the uh, the scientists at the uh, Soviet I, did, I didn't look at any of these scientists. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't look at them either. That's why I was going to ask you if you did, because that way somebody can sound like they did some research. <laughs> no, uh, so this operation it was decreed on May thirteenth, nineteen forty six, under Resolution Number ten seventeen dash four one nine by the Council of Ministers of the Soviet Union and to minimize their attempts of escape uh, of the Nazi scientists after the war ended, Soviet's authorities scheduled deportations to take place simultaneously across the Soviet zone the Soviet populated zone that was in uh, Germany and uh, in the shortest period of time, it was between the 15th and the 20th in October 1946, the head of the Soviet secret police in uh, in Germany, uh, how do you say his name? Ivan Shervov. He uh, he personally led the operation, and Major Generals A. M. Snidved, the Chief of Operations Department of Internal Affairs Ministry in Berlin, was delegated the responsibilities for the logistical support. So basically, they just went up into these places. They had trains pre-positioned on the stations around Germany. And then in the early mornings of those days that I uh, told you, the the police officers accompanied by the soldiers were dispatched to the homes of the German specialists and stuff, ordered them to prepare for a trip to the USSR. And uh, then soldiers would start loading their furniture and other household shit, and their families would go with them. And that's how they got on those trains. They just got woken up. Get your shit. Let's go. You're going to Russia. So do you think, do you think Russia just got like one really good scientist or was the fact that they got like more that, uh, that had them ahead of us? Well, they were apparently their, um, their primary com- uh, competition was coming from Britain's operation surgeon. And they, uh, they, um, they offered a, a much a more lucrative, uh, they offered much more lucrative conditions for the scientists rather than uh, the English ones that are British, whatever the fuck I can't think. Same thing. Naturally. Yeah. So um, <laughs> salaries in the USSR for scientists range from RM 800 to 8,000 per month. I don't know what RM is. Rupees. I don't know. Uh, Rem- Russia, I don't Russian know. money. Uh, where, 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 there you go. Is, I, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> it makes sense. But in uh Is it like the ruble or something? I thought they or is that somewhere else? Oh Pretty yeah, sure. rubles. So yeah. in in um in Britain the average offer was uh RM four hundred per month. So Britain offered no long term employment uh options to the scientists, whereas the USSR provided double rations, which were small parcels of chocolates or cigarettes. And uh the condi- <laughs> these conditions <laughs> and a fifth of vodka. <laughs> and uh <laughs> conditions uh, like those conditions kept the balance tilted in favor of the Soviet Union. Listen, you get two bottles when you come to Mother Russia. 
<laughs> and tell the staff, double and tell the staff, <laughs> you, son, you son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> but uh, the, say no more. Uh, uh, towards the end of the year of 1946, they started act. Um, they acted rashly as a respo- uh, response to strained relationships with other Allied powers. Whatever that means, sir. <laughs> you know, not gonna lie, if I was a Obviously, if I was a Nazi scientist back in the day, I mean, Russia would be the place to go to get away from persecution. You know, you're not going to get arrested in Russia. United States will arrest your ass now if you're an old scientist or concentration camp person. And then probably in Britain, too. But I don't know. I don't fucking know. Uh, okay. It'd be a wise mood to escape, uh, escape being arrested. The primary competition for the Soviet was coming from uh, Britain's operation. So um, the Soviets, though, initially offered much more lucrative conditions for the German scientists. The salaries in the USSR for scientists ranged from RM 800 to 8,000 per month, whereas um, those in Britain, like they offered like RM 400 per month. Again, uh, or not again, because we <laughs> part before. Roman <laughs> monies is what we're calling it. So the Roman monies, they offered more. And then also, um, yeah, so Britain didn't offer like long-term employment options for these German scientists, whereas the USSR provided uh, that and double <laughs> rations, which were small parcels of chocolate or cigarettes. And they kept the balances tilted in the if if, that kept the balance tilted in their favor. So it was, yeah, it it was a more, it was a better fucking, um, it was a better employment option. It's like, oh, are we gonna go to to England? We're gonna go to England over here where they won't give us long time employment. It's like, why the fuck would we do that when they're offering to take us, our family, and from what I heard, sometimes their entire thing of furniture and shit just like uplift their whole fucking life there and these motherfuckers are often st- offering us chocolates and cigarettes chocolates and cigarettes <laughs> England don't got that yes it's like yeah they do it's like yeah but they're saving for the royal family look at their teeth look at their teeth <laughs> <laughs> all right man but, all right, man, but if, uh, if they eventually fucking get a, a princess from America that gets killed in France and then uh, the first I, I, the first um uh, did, or if they if they get a princess from America and she gets killed in France, or they diversify uh, the the family a little bit, I'm gonna be pissed if we don't stay here for that. Their fucking princess Diana and uh, what's her name? Something Mark Markle, Logan Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, Megan Markle. Yeah, <laughs> Megan Markle <laughs> and Logan Paul. Oh man, dude, I'm stumbling over myself. So yeah. I- <laughs> that's we got the gist here i I think well you know they're stealing they they stole them pretty good they did, but they didn't get no von braun that's for it, sure <laughs> talk about uh if they would have though we would yeah have dude, and they know apollo and they and walt disney isn't doing deals with russia he only does shit with hitler and germany the fuck <laughs> oh damn Dude, Wild. so... Hey, uh, go ahead. Uh, no, that's fine. No, tell me what you're going to say, Mike. That's, I want to hear it <laughs> Guys, I feel like I shredded a lot of what I said. <laughs> I'm sure there's bits and parts that are good in there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too much about this one, but it's like... I, I it's, a, it's just... I thought they just forced them. I did not see an incentive plan. It doesn't seem like the thing that they would have done. Seems like they would just be like, "Well, you're our bitch now. Get get over Welcome it." Welcome to know? Russia. But they're like, but they're like, not. Hey, you're a bitch, but do you like chocolate and cigarettes? <laughs> Who like talkies and ciggies? <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude! I'd kill for a Marlboro's and a Hershey bar right now. <laughs> <laughs> We cannot go there. This is our homeland, our mother Russia. Oh, fuck mother, or mother Russia. This is our homeland, mother Germany. Oh, fuck mother Germany. They don't give us nothing but German chocolate. Have you ever had German chocolate? It's okay. (laughs) Those good chocolate and cigarettes. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, actually in Russia it, it's it's cool like um so like fairy tales like everybody has their own fucking different like um they have their own different takes of uh fairy tales that of um other countries have right so you have Han- uh, Hansel and Gretel and um in Russia you have um you have like a different take on it where the house was actually built from a um a um communist uh witch that her house was built of cigars and chocolates candies all the different type of things <laughs> we can stay here yes we can Hansel <laughs> we can Hansel <laughs> Look, they have a stove made of peppermint and they have little stick <laughs> made of camel snooze <laughs> I like camel snooze <laughs> yeah yeah Poppy will be proud <laughs> god damn we really need to be going Oh, no, you don't need to be going. You haven't taken your licorice in Copenhagen yet. <laughs> <laughs> Papa says uh, real men only. <laughs> Papa says real men only chew skull. <laughs> Your Papa wouldn't know his ass from a pussy. What? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that was funny. Uh, uh, I drank too much. <laughs> that'd be a funny short, man. That would be... Um, be hilarious. It'd be like the... The, um, the community when Jeff throws the dice up or whatever, and it just goes, and it's just a different country, and it's just a fucked up funny story from Just a porn. different... Of the same story, just, just a different yeah. fairy tale with a different like, but a different country spin on it. I can't think of any Russian names. I, all I can think of is Stalin. Oh, Vladimir! Damn it! Um, anybody know a, a woman's name that's Russian? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, about women there? Uh, Anya. Anya. Oh shit! See, I, all I Olga. <laughs> God damn it! See, that's better than mine. Mine was all just like. Putina and uh, and Stalin. Is. That's not, Putina sounds more Canadian. But oh, Putin. I was going to say it was Katya. I was uh, watching yeah, Archer Katya. today. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Mm, so. I don't, um, you know, it'd be a funny take Jack and the Beanstalk, but like, um, I nah, don't mind. We're not going to go there. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was gonna say um, Jack and the Beanstalk. I was gonna, get <laughs> I was gonna dirty. say Jack and the Beanstalk, but it was well, in let's... Mexico, and instead of a giant beanstalk, it was just like a giant fucking uh, habanero pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and then the giant was played by um, um, God damn it, what's his name? Uh, Louise. Um... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the giant. He's just like. It's it's me, Luis Guzman. What are you doing up here? You ain't supposed to be up here without anyone ever. Well, I'm just trying to get your golden goose. You ain't getting my golden goose. He's just out pathos. You ain't getting that, okay? I can't do a very good voice of his. <laughs> I mean, not to sound like a dick, but yeah, yeah that, was no, that wasn't great. Bucket. I can't do his <laughs> accent. He's got like that lisp, but he's kind of got like... He almost could sound like Tra- he sounds like Tracy Morgan with a with a, like a lisp to me. That's what he yeah. sounds, sounds like a little bit, yeah. And then and then an accent yeah. too. What can you think you were like, dude? I can't, I can't. The lisp thing, dude. I can't, I can't do that in any accent. I don't think. Yoff. <laughs> De- <laughs> very decent chocolate. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> God damn it. And that's why that man is a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So more than uh, 2,200 German scientists, specialists, a list, all the lists is they uh, and their families adding up to somewhere around six to 7,000 people were forced into employment in the USSR on October 22nd. And they took uh, about 1,250 aircraft crews and missile experts 
about 500 rocket specialists, 350 radar and radio experts, 30 uh, specialists in solid rocket propulsion, and 25 experts in the gyroscope navigation experts. So I know navigation NASA, system. I believe, uses uh, solid rocket or uh, p- propulsion, or at least they did. Uh, did Russia when they won the space race? Do you know? I have no idea because I don't even know what solid rocket propulsion is. Anyway, it, it is. It's a chemical compound. It's more like a paste instead of a liquid. Oh, gotcha. Oh, I think is it like that shit that you get with like the model rockets? You know, it's like a little small little piece of clay. Yeah, or whatever. but it's 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 uh it's a, a different formula. Pulse. It's yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I thought they were using rocket fuel this whole time. I don't know. There's uh, they're getting fancy with it. Well, I think rocket fuel is considered a solid fuel, even though it's not like right. completely solid. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm, I, I I'm just going off of stuff that I've heard before. I'm just picturing cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. You know, when they fill up a rocket, like mm. a like, gas station. Oh, yeah. But obviously, they're not u- using gas. Oh, speaking of badasses, here's Joseph. Fuck you. Sorry, I had to pick that. <laughs> I can't find any scientist things. Uh-oh. <laughs> That was poor timing. I didn't pee all over the place. There's a bath running in there. Liar. <laughs> that was just poor timing. I wasn't even thinking of that until you said that. <laughs> so it seems like you feel a little guilty. Why are you hiding your face now? Your face all red. My so breath. Off. I am not no, so they, uh, they used uh, 90, They used 92 trains to transport all these people and their furniture. And uh, they were offered conference, uh, not conference, contract. You can't fucking talk. And uh, and uh, yeah, they got con- uh, they got offered contracts, basically the same of what Soviet workers were already making in in their fields at the at the time. Yeah, I just gotta say, I really thought that it, they would have been a lot more fucking dickish to the Germans, because you know they they had the they, bar- got, they had the bargain for theirs. We got we got ours first, and they got slim pickings. Like we got, we did got, we get, did, did, I thought they got theirs first. I thought they did theirs like almost. They did theirs like a year later in nineteen forties, nineteen forty six, forty six. Yeah, yeah, and we got ours nineteen forty five, didn't we? Ooh, I can't tell you. I know it's just right after the end of the war, or the World War, that everybody was swooping them up, though. Swooping. So Operation Paperclip between 1945 and 1959. So we we got ahead of the game two years prior. Or no, wait, after the end of the war. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Wikipedia says... All right, yeah. So, paperclip. More than 1,600 German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from the former Nazi Germany to the U.S. for government employment after the end of World War II in Europe between 1945 and 1959. So, we we jumped the gun first. I don't remember when Matchbox started. But, I mean, it would make sense that we got there first because we got, we got the head of the pro America for the V2s. Like we got, yeah, we got the big ones, but we also had, um, um, oh my God, all uh, the list. What was the list called? Anybody remember? The one they, uh, that the, the one they found in the toilet. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what the, the fucking, that was the Rolodex was, for the Nazis. <laughs> Yeah, well, we ended up getting that. I mean, we we got. I forgot what it was called. It was whatever that fucking janitor's name was, I think, or some shit, or someone's name was on the list or something. Hmm. Yeah. So we yeah we did that whatever. Whereas um, 
Operation um, sla- uh, Russian slash uh, Viking name happened during uh, October 22nd, 1946, during one night on October. What is that? Well, it said it was over like a span of five days. Um, but I think they probably, they I think it was like a, probably a span of five days getting everybody out, but I think they probably collected everybody in the one night. Because then I feel like other people would get warm and be like, oh, fucking Gerald down the way just got fucking taken by the secret police last night. Uh, (laughs) You might be next. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, gather up. Everybody's like whistling. They got fucking like little uh, sheep herding dogs barking at the German scientists and getting them all like herded up. There's a... uh, a quote by Fritz Carl Free Seigchat. He was a German engineer that was recruited to the Soviet Union during uh, opera uh, during Operation Ostafikum, and he was in a uh, he was held in Russia for six years. And it said, uh, "This is a quote that he, well, like like an encounter, like whatever he said. This is how they get. This is how they got him. They said between midnight and three, when everybody was asleep." They knew exactly where I lived. First of all, a few days before I was captured, a fellow came. They had a key and everything to the apartment, to the door. There was one interpreter who told me in German, get up, you're getting mobilized to work in Russia. There were about a half dozen soldiers with uh, machine guns who surrounded me. When I wanted to get to the toilet, they had to check it first to make sure there was no escape hatch. It was a tight Uh operation, and they did that with every family. Many families came while I was alone. God damn. So that doesn't sound like he was being offered a uh No, they they fucking stormed his fucking house. It was just like ha ha <laughs> hi. <laughs> you come so with us now. It was like, hold on, let me grab my things and take a shit. Nope. <laughs> well they let him take a shit. They just had to make sure there's no escape hatch. He's like, fuck, this close. <laughs> yeah, but the that that doesn't sound like he's being offered to like maybe they paid him once he got there, but he didn't have a choice but to go. I think wake it, up it, and there's a uh, six soldiers surrounding you with guns. Yeah, yeah they say up, that they gave him they offered them chocolate and cigarettes, but this is what we 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 didn't read into is like that's all they were offered. <laughs> yes, they got compensation, but while they were staying in camps before they got quit places or whatever, all they had to eat was chocolate bars and cigarettes. Well, it was expired candy. It was stale cigarettes. It was all bad. <laughs> See what the government didn't tell you is it was it the cigarettes were Seneca's and it wasn't chocolate. It was fucking expired Smarties, and we were fucking. <laughs> over it. Um, no, um, well, that's also the shit. It's like it seems like it's a nice fucking trade off because the alternative is worse because they probably they intimidate you to take the nice offer. Yeah. So that's you're right, like, you're right. That's generally yeah. how that it works. It's like you're gonna yeah, want you're gonna want my candy bar like, and, and what if and what if I refuse? You're not going to. You're not going to <laughs> <laughs> and what if I refuse? You're not going to refuse. Chocolate cigarettes, only option. <laughs> Hansel, I think we need to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good little pig, <laughs> dude. <laughs> little do pig, little do. That sounds like a good movie quote. <laughs> I'm going to make. <laughs> Look at how the person who made Bade the Pig was a German fat. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have no idea who made that movie. Oh man, you should go look it up. <laughs> Oh man, six tab. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so the per- the purpose of this, why Joseph looks up uh, that uh, uh, director Chris Noonan, writers Dick King Smith, George Miller, and Chris Noonan. Who's this Dick Chris King Noonan? Smith? Uh, is that his fucking name? name? Yeah, hell of oh. a name. Chris Noonan, born in 1952 in Sydney, Australia. Ooh, so I mean, wasn't uh, wasn't American born? I mean, that's that anything that that's close to me. 
<laughs> I said, oh shit, George Miller, also an Australian film director. And this guy, Dick King Smith, born in 1922 in Bitten, Gloucestershire, England. So, I mean, that's uh, that's all in Europe. That all counts. If it's in Europe, it's Germany to me now. But, <laughs> well, and I'll, okay, then. I don't think <laughs> Australia is in Europe. Oh, yeah, never mind. I was thinking of England. No, <laughs> Australia is not in Europe. Now I sound stupid. I was only thinking of the English guy. I wasn't thinking of the Australian guys. They're obviously from good. Austria. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it, Australia is its own content. Okay, Oceana. Oceanus? Is it Oceanus? Or is it if, Oceanus? If you believe such a place exists, there's a conspiracy on that, too. Oh, really? They, they don't yeah. believe? You think Andy Anthony's lying to us when he got that fucking kangaroo tattoo? <laughs> yeah, is it that's gonna bug me now because I can't think of it. Is is the continent called Oceania or Oceanus? I think it's just called Australia. That they have a different name for it here. Do they? I don't yeah, know that. they don't. They don't call it by the actual country name, or they do, and then they also call it. So uh, I, was, I, th- I think Oceania re- refers to like a bunch of Pacific islands, doesn't it? Like that would be like yeah. New Zealand too. I'm pretty right. sure it's just Australia. Is it? Australia. Man, now you guys got me second guessing myself over here. Oh, you That's what we do. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong too, because I haven't really practiced geography since what, fucking middle school? Like, barely high school, with just the oh, first okay. half of my freshman oh. year. <laughs> so, um,. Uh, and you sounded like you're about to crack this case wide open (laughs) (laughs) son of a bitch I found the missing piece Oceania is a geographical region that is described as a continent in some parts of the world it includes Australasia Melanesia Micronesia and Polynesia spanning the eastern and western hemisphere so I guess it's known as as a um, continent in some parts of the world. So it's, so some parts of the world call it whatever. We grew up calling it Australia, but I swear to God, when I was going to Butte College, they didn't call it Australia. They called it Oceania. Australia. Or Oceania or some stupid shit like that. I say stupid shit. See, that sounds dumber. You must have <laughs> went to one of those progressive schools. Well, this lady... <laughs> Our our teacher, <laughs> our, our teacher, she did say that um, it's like proper. This wasn't like a fucking geography class either. It was a fucking like writing class or something. I don't know. It was it was about grammar. Okay, it was like she was talking about grammar with things. It was, it was like a fucking yeah. Okay, <laughs> it sounded like uh, okay. So she was talking about like proper ways to say things and stuff. And she said one time that a sign said uh, free. It said uh, free ice beer, but they didn't have a comma or something in, in it. And so she said it said free ice beer. So it meant free cold beer. And she went there and argued with the people that she demanded free ice beer because that was the advertisement. I don't remember if she said she got the cold beer or not. It was that free. Yeah, I don't know. It was something weird. The way that they spelled it was like, technically, it's this way. And I don't know if she actually, whatever, but whatever Karen act she did, she yeah, I was about to say, some Karen was, and yeah, Karen I was about to say your teacher sounds like kind of a cunt. Yeah, so whatever, <laughs> whatever Karen act she did, she put, it, she put it in the book for the class. So, what the fuck? Yeah, like, it was, in, yeah, it was it, the sign was in it, but she explained the story of it that she went into the liquor store and demanded the free beer or some shit like that because the way it was written. But anyways, in this class, for some reason, we like we were talking about like the continents and stuff too, and that's when like the Oceania thing came up or Oceania, yeah. And I was like, that's weird. I've never heard that before. I thought it was always Australia, so I assume they change it much like they keep changing Pluto uh, being a planet and not. So I just assumed it was like that situation. We had a Pluto situation on our hands. If Pluto can be a planet, it can be a planet again. Planet, planet, planet. <laughs> so I, I just, yeah, I assumed it was that. I didn't know it's just um, 
I didn't know it depends on where you're at, where the what they call it. I guess. <laughs> so whatever. Mm, yeah. Anyways. So I'm only half stupid in this in this. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I don't know. You went to quite lengths to explain why you weren't stupid. Yeah, and that's what a, a clear crazy. idiot does. They have to fucking prove they're not stupid. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me get all the facts together real quick. Yeah, but, <laughs> hold on, I can scientifically prove it. I'm only half dumb. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. <laughs> this is totally funny. No, uh, <clears throat> so the whole purpose of this operation, obviously, was to was to transplant these uh, Germans into Russia to continue production and research for their rockets, as everybody wanted was the V2s. But they didn't get no Von Braun like we did. We got that first draft. Yeah, we got uh, Von Braun. (laughs) (laughs) Number one pick in the draft goes to the United States of America. (laughs) And, like, a lot of the important people on his fucking team, too. Like, not only did we get him, but I can't remember the other names, but we got we got other people that were really, like, integral to the project, too. It's like, what the fuck did they get? Like, because they, they wanted the same shit that we got. They didn't get the same guy as we got. <laughs> Like it's like when you it's like when you're pulling out cards in a pack and you're waiting for that fucking like holographic Charizard and you get a holographic Charmander. It's like that's cool. That card can't evolve. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's what America got the holographic Charizard. Russia got that holographic Charmander and uh England and the rest of the world got that holographic Bulbasaur. And do Jackson. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, but <laughs> I do not understand these references. <laughs> I guess you can. Um, sorry. Take a second of my throat. No, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two major reasons why this operation was held. Uh, one of them was the fear that the German economy and technolo- uh, technological potential would accelerate rapidly with the return of peace and the Soviets' desire to gain. Er, steal this technology and technological uh, advancements for the USR. USSR was obviously ideal to them. They, they basically just didn't want the Germans to, because they knew they would have surpassed them if they would have just left them alone and left them in the wild doing what Germans yep. do. Yep. And then the other one was the fear of being condemned for non-compliance with the Allied Control Council agreements on the destruction of German military installations. So they were just really walking back the fact that they were part of the Axis is what they were doing? It's like, <laughs> no, no, nah, bro, that, one, that wasn't us. You're mistaken. We wouldn't do that. <laughs> Shit. They fought that- us, man. We burned half our country down going against them. Why would we be their friends? <laughs> It's like the the South Park with when BP oil when they were doing all their oil spills and they just had the CEO. He's like, "We're sorry, I'm sorry, we're sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically all all I had for just regular notes. Besides just yeah. chatting about it. Well, it's like, this, I knew this was going to be a short one just because we've already done it twice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, this one is a bit more, this, this, I find this one more interesting than uh, Matchbook. Yeah, because we're dealing with underdog too. The underdog, uh, the underdog, well, well, I don't know how bad Matchbox was. Well, it's, well, like, it's like, all the all fucking, uh, oh, we're getting some echoes. All of the fucking, like, technological advancements came from, like, the Cold War (laughs) from America and Russia. And it's like, what the fuck did Europe do? Or, you know, England. I I don't know. I have, like, I don't know what technological advancements they, military advancements they got from, you know, the Germans. Yeah, I have no idea. I never, I didn't actually even look into any of that. Joseph, here are... Look up ex, uh, specialist. Look what up say you? Specialist? I don't know, man. <laughs> um, 
I I couldn't find any. And when I was looking before, I really couldn't find any of the scientists. I just I knew what their goal was was the same fucking shit. And then there's the whole Soviet also's thing, which uh, I kept laughing because the whole time I was just like also's. <laughs> um, it. It was the Western code name for an operation that took place during 1945 and 46. I think it's basically like, the, the, oh, in Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. Is, oh my God, Czechoslovakia. Dude. There we go. Um, it was. It's like the same thing that we had with Operation Paperclip, except for, you know, you know, called something else. Yeah. Much. So they were trying to find um, they're trying to exploit the uh, the German atomic related facilities and their intellectual materials. Um, yeah, just for the, the benefit of the Soviet atomic bomb project. So, I mean, they were trying to get to that atomic bomb. Um, <clears throat> That's what's up. Yeah, I don't know. That's all I got here. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. I mean, it's just yeah, it's it's the same fucking shit, different names. Everybody trying to race to the same crap, except for um, you know, one people say yeehaw a lot, and the other people go dios. Uh, more one people talk more nasally and more intimidating. <laughs> a yeehaw a lot and drink beers and fucking shoot fireworks. So yeah. That's what we got there. Um, so the, yeah, the UK okay. had a, the invention of the jet engine, the invention of the hovercraft, the uh, the Colossus computer. Oh, dude, he's a sick ass. Um, the structure of DNA was uh, founded in Britain. So, hmm. I am. Yeah, they did some shit. Yeah, well, they couldn't find a way to splice their DNA to make fucking better teeth. Stephen took... Hawking came out of there. Oh, that's not true, actually. They yeah, but does that come from their, their, their stuff from getting Russians? Or Germans? Let's see. The Colossus computer, definitely. That was the 50s. And then DNA was between 1916 and 2004. So who knows about that? <laughs> 1942, Stephen Hawking was out there. So I'm sure there was some influence. Yeah, probably. The invention of the World Wide Web, 1955. Hmm. So I was like four. That was almost ten years after. So there you go. WWW by Tim Burns. They got some shit. Who knows if that came from the Germans or not, but. Like, well, yeah, I didn't think that they didn't come up with anything. I'm talking about, like, military <laughs> technological advances that came out during the time of the Cold War as a result from Operation Matchbook. Yeah, they got those. Or, really or before close. the Cold War, you know? It's... Yeah, I don't know about that. I was just, I just looked up their technolo- technological advancements during that time. And then that time, Joe looks like he's checking more into it. Or watching porn, one of the two. But he's super concentrated. A little bit of both. No, I was like, all of the above. <laughs> but what I was gonna say, the can't really blame the Soviets for doing it because everybody else is fucking doing it too. They just wanted a piece of their pie. You know the. Oh yeah, no, no, I don't blame them for doing it. It was smart. If they didn't do it, that'd be a serious waste of resources. Yeah, and especially if all they had to pay was fucking. Some chocolate and some cigarettes Psh, all day. <laughs> Come here. Come here, Jordan. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about it, Joseph? What do you think uh, about it, Joseph? Well, you know, it's definitely no Operation Paperclip. And it's definitely no Operation Matchbox 20. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, Joseph Viking was probably the, the most organized one out of all three. Like they yeah. had, if anything, they had everything down. Especially because they were just kidnapping these motherfuckers. Yeah, and they, and they like, oh, either you're going to work for this candy bar and cigarettes or you're going to die. There's nothing you can look like. There's nothing that I've seen that seen. Um, ugh, there's nothing that I read that showed any type of like war within itself. Like Operation uh, Paperclip was. 
because like even the president was against doing this and that. And there was like a, a moral fucking thing in between that. Russia was just like, no, German science now is ours. What about what they did to people? Who cares about people? <laughs> like, like, yeah, there there was no like I don't know. Just, um Stalin wasn't trying to fight it. There's no like turmoil inside of them. Yeah, there was no like inner fucking turmoil. There was no like divide in like any of their like officials and shit. All right. Not that we know of. That we know of. That that I could find written anywhere in the fucking short span of time that I read about this. Um, but I mean, with Operation Paperclip, it's one of the first fucking things that pop up. And you got fucking good old Harry Bear Truman, right? Is that who it was? What? Yeah. Uh, Truman, yeah. Uh, he was like, no, we can't do it. No, they, they're fucking, they have war crimes. They're crimes against humanity. They're monsters, like, pretty much. Well, he was probably like, eh, we can't because I'm going to look bad. And they're like, well, you know, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just erase everything. Whereas Russia did World war crimes. Care. What are you talking about? They're like, the only thing they probably erased was their citizenship. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like they're just like, no, Russian born. Mm, <laughs> Werner, Werner sounds like a German name. No, Werner. Vernonstone. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't... <laughs> His name is Werner. That's Barry. Barry. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Uh, I don't know. They, they seem like it, it was, it probably was more like, um, I don't know. I lost my train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's probably getting loaded on. It's because you got loaded on those trains with them, the mother yeah. Germans, huh, Joseph? So yeah, we yeah. got to get you all frazzled. Tell you, I got, I got loaded on a lot of trains before. <laughs> and I was took always a load of, took a lot of loads on some trains before I'm sure. <laughs> now, let me tell I'm, you, I was, the, wait, I was waiting for that one. Let me tell you, this caboose is weary. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with that, um, that, that's all I got to say about this. Did you get your <laughs> final thoughts in, Mister Meek? Oh. Um. Like like I said earlier, like it would have been stu- it would have been a fucking dumbass waste of resources if they didn't do what they did. So, like I like this happened. This has been declassified. We know this happened, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this, they they won the space race for a reason. I think that's it. You know, pretty much everything I've I've, I've said before is just is. I, I, I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Words. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's pretty crazy. It's mm-hmm. just funny how just everyone just uh, like all the all the leaders of the world. They all try to hide their bullshit. But they're all doing the same shit. They act like they're they're different and everything. It's, are all a bunch of snaky ass motherfuckers. Every single one of them. Yeah, that's for true. <laughs> yep, oh, I, yeah. I agree with that com- wholeheartedly and completely. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking slime balls, man. But yeah, that's uh, it's just these operations are all crazy to me. So I just thought it was wild how they how they did it basically everything in the night almost just uh gather up these fellers and women too i'm sure hey fellas <laughs> sorry when you said fellers i just thought of butters <laughs> oh, i just got word matthew wants to uh close out this podcast for us when we're done <laughs> yeah he can say his uh, final thoughts aha uh-huh, you thought you were free from me I'm mad of the metaverse half returned to wreak havoc on such low level creatures. FYI, it was Ozenberg list you goldfish memory having fucks. BT dubs, they actually don't have poor memories. The most Snapchatted memory having animal is actually the Casey Spawn Ordicus Spanius Horus, also known as Casey's mom, when I slip her this dick. Dare I say bong? Thank you for listening to the Conspiracy Outpost. 
<laughs> that works. Casey, I don't think you laughed. I don't think you appreciated it. <laughs>